Consumer Technology Association represents the $285 billion U.S. technology industry with more than 2,200 companies, and they are the producers every year of CES. And kicking off this week's broadcast, making way for their exhibitors for the next three hours is the president and CEO of the Consumer Technology Association, Gary Shapiro. Welcome into tomorrow, Gary. How are you? Thank you, Dave. It's an honor. Congratulations on reaching the age of 21 of maturity. You yes. can drink and you can do all sorts of fun <laughs> things now. And uh, no, 21 years with CES, we're, we're, we've been thrilled. Well, we've been thrilled to be here. There's always so much fun t- happening around here. The excitement level is always uh, up and every year. And you and as you have seen, certainly in the past 20 plus years of CES, almost 50 years of CES, l- not that you and I have seen them all, uh, incredible innovation. And it continues this year as well. Well, this is an extraordinary event. It's our largest footprint ever. We're over 2.45 million net square feet of exhibit space compared to about 2.2 and change last year. But it's just the number of exhibitors. It's the diversity of innovation. It's all the excitement we're seeing. It's the optimism. It's the different industries that are here mm-hmm. wanting to meet each other, their leaders, and who cross fertilization, which leads to further innovation. If there's one story from the show, it's about the small companies and the big companies coming together in a way which is making a difference for the future, but also them showing products which consumers are just going to love. Oh, absolutely, as happens every year. You talk about uh, making a difference and the networking between small and big companies and the various innovators, and it's become a whole lot more than just devices and companies that are device-driven. While there absolutely are thousands here on the show floor, there are also now a lot of other companies, thus the name change from Consumer Electronics Association to Consumer Technology Association, the likes of of Boingo, uh, the likes of Google and and, and Facebook and so forth, and Lyft and, and, and all the, you know, Uber, a lot of new members of CTA, and there's a reason for that because they are technology-driven. They just don't have to have a device. <laughs> They're technology driven. They like what we're doing, focusing the, the nation and the world on innovation. They believe in disruption mm-hmm. in a positive way, saying, look, we're going to create new businesses, new jobs, new services that consumers want. And now that we're doing things, we're actually going to fundamentally change lives. Not only like with Uber and Lyft, where you can live because you have a transportation service or Airbnb, where you can visit, but also with a lot in the healthcare area, how healthy you will be. Mm-hmm. We're entering a world, and you're seeing it at CES, where some of the biggest problems of mankind involving our health, our transportation, the food we eat, the agriculture production, they're being solved by these little tiny sensing devices and new ways of doing business, and you put it together with the Internet, the Internet of Things, and you're having all sorts of entrepreneurs starting new services and consumers living better. And we're, we're literally crawling at the infancy. We're not even toddling yet in terms of coming up with new things that are going to fundamentally change lives. Oh, it's amazing. What uh, part of the show floors, probably very plural here at this point, especially this year, have transformed the most that you, that you think? Uh, Eureka Park, obviously a major area for these startups. Well, Eureka Park has grown dramatically. We had 350 companies Last year, now this year, it's 500 with a waiting list. And and the story of the show, in part, is the excitement that's generating because the biggest companies are sending their people to go there and learn and find gems, as are the investment community and everyone else wants a partner. Feedback's been amazing. The auto area has gone up uh, 33% because we have not only the auto companies, but the the companies that provide uh, components and structure them like Delphi and... and, um, uh, Johnson Controls, and even chip companies like Qualcomm and BlackBerry, mm-hmm. as well as uh, uh, NVIDIA, video, video systems. So th- we're moving towards this connected driverless car, and it's, it's a good thing. And then there are other areas which is still small, but I'm going to tell you, they're making big growth areas, and you know they'll be big in 10 years or so, is robotics. Oh, yeah. The robots are getting realer. They're doing more sorts of different things. And then there's, of course, the tremendous growth in drones and 3D printing. Um, And then there's like traditional products, which new, new sorts of things like Ultra 4K HD. It's gone to HDR. It's gotten better, you know, brighter colors, doing more things. And you want to talk about an old industry. We started the Radio Manufacturers Association in 1924. But audio, audio now is getting better. Mm -hmm. It's good as the quality of being there live as we are now with the sound quality and consumers want to replicate that. It's stock, you know, there was a lost generation there when we went from the LP to, to CD to 
MP3. It just kept actually, technically it was worse. Yeah. Although it allowed portability and a lot of other things. But now with the great popularity of Beats by Dr. Dre and headphones, now the whole uh, ecosystem is getting involved with all the different components and the music industry as well. And in, in the video world, of course, we liked our DVDs for, for HDTV. Now there's a whole opportunity to have DVDs that are ultra HD 4K in Hollywood. And the electronics companies have gotten together and agreed upon a standard. We're not going to have a standards war, but we'll have pre-recorded available soon. And it's funny you talk about DVDs and, and how uh, things ha- have just emerged and gotten so much better over the years. We were talking about our first CES, uh, the big thing that was coming with DVDs. Yeah, and that was that it t- takes you uh, back to these 21 years and look at where we've been and how we've dealt with things and just the technologies in general. Uh, it's been always fun to cover them. Uh, what's been the relationship, do you think, between content and marketing and consumer technology? Is that a synergy that's working a lot closer now, too? Well, we tried it in a hotel last year where we had the content marketers, the CMOs, and the tech community like Yahoo and Google and others and put them together. And wow, that's taken off. We have three hotels now, several thousand people focusing on it. I didn't mention one area that's amazing. I just came from a demonstration of Samsung's uh, virtual reality, and I, I just took a uh, roller coaster ride. I could swear it was real. Everything was moving. <laughs> you needed an airsick bag. It was so. I real. didn't need an airsick bag, but I got very scared. We're at the top, about to go straight down, and I probably was yelling. And there's a video of it that will get me in trouble. But no, there's so much going on. That area is going to change. It'll change education. It'll change mm-hmm. movies and storytelling. I mean, there, right, it'll change games. So there's that is an area that's ready to take off because a lot of the, the problems of motion sickness have been solved. Yeah, exactly. In fact, folks can see virtual. Re- reality of you and I on this broadcast with this 364K camera right here, this nice little camera, and we're closer than you can think. But the other interesting thing, one of your brand new exhibitors here this year, NASA, also on the show, talking about what brought them here and how that synergy works with so many other technology companies. So that's a very uh, cool get for CTA as well, to have like NASA saying, we got to share more technologies and learn from these technology companies. It's Absolutely, and we're working with them to get our first CES on the moon. Oh, good. Well, hopefully we'll be around to broadcast from there. Uh, maybe in the next couple of years. Uh, maybe not. We'll, we'll see. see. Well, Gary, we thank you for kicking off this week's broadcast and making way for your exhibitors to be joining us over the next three hours. Again, part of our three weeks worth of extensive coverage of CES. Thanks for having us and thanks for being on the program. Well, thanks for 21 years of great coverage. Well, thank you. And say hi to your lovely wife for me. I she's, will. She's been in the background. Oh, there you go. So, We'll end, we'll end looking at uh, Mal as opposed to us as Dave Graveline brings you further into tomorrow here from CES, the 2016 edition. This is Into Tomorrow on the Advanced Media Network. Hi, Mal. Hi.